This is Ozzy Speaks on Sirius XM, Ozzy's Boneyard. I'm Billy Morrison. And I'm Ozzy Osbourne. We are back. I'll tell you, so I was thinking about, you know, you've written some really huge songs, like properly huge, iconic songs. And I was thinking, you know, a bit... Co-written. Co-written, yeah, sure, but they're, but they're Aussie songs, and it's the same as, you know, my guy Billy Idol writes Rebel Yell, and... He has this phrase, if you live long enough, you get to see, and then he'll put in what it is you get to see. And his point is, if you write something like Rebel Yell, sooner or later, you're going to see weird covers of it, like, you know, a Japanese flutist playing Rebel Yell. Oh, yeah. When I did that thing with Jack, what he would do, he'd phone up the people in his phones, he said, he'd go, he'd explain it, and he'd give them a song to learn. I had a lesbian choir sing one of my, <laughs> one of the songs. Well, look, I've I've actually come up with something. I can we can do it. So there'll there'll be this one which you'll remember. So hang on a yeah, second, let's see my, this. Let's click. Hold on, I'm trying to click play. But this is a massive marching band playing Crazy Trump. <laughs> I mean, it must be... Look, when I, I saw that, he learned, he did that one, he did Perry Mason. I mean, but how it must make you feel a little I'm weird. I'm sitting in the stand, I'm like... <laughs> I said to the guy, I'm thinking, oh, these guys must have been rehearsing these for months. I said, how long did it take you to learn all this? He said, oh, two or three days. Like, three days? Three days? Took us longer to I, write the thing. I said, I, 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 I'd see them live on stage and I've got to have a fucking telly <laughs> But I mean, look, here's, here's another one. I've got three to play here. Here's another one, which is uh, on the Ellen show. She had this little Japanese oh, kid. Yeah. Oh, I, I want to just, I want to play this. You've seen this one, right? Oh, I was there. Oh, you were there. I yeah. mean, it's it's amazing. And and also, I'll tell you what this is. So this is what started me. And then we'll talk about how it makes you feel and and, and what that means to have this kind of cover thing going on. So this is about there was a band called Fuel. They had they had some hits, and uh, the lead singer's son sent me a video. He's eleven years old, and he sent me a video, and I and I watched it. And this is him, right? Like, 11 years old, playing Sabbath on the drums. I mean, I was not doing that when I was 11. It's amazing. Isn't it amazing? But it must make you feel... Look, look, that's what... what like, you know, it kind of entertains me. Yeah. Because I think, fucking hell. I mean, look, there are great songs, and there are then songs that marching bands will learn and play on a football stadium. Yeah. That is kind of insane. And I'm sure Paranoid has been covered every which way. I mean, there's a lot of Sabbath stuff. Sa I think Sabbath and my some uh, uh, crazy train has been some. I mean, uh, what well, can you think of the weirdest one that you've seen? What was that fucking band? Uh, Jack's band. Uh, they had a band called a uh, side band called Perfect Circle. What was? It? Oh, Tool. Tool covered. Uh, I think they covered Diary of a Madman. Uh, the song. Right. Is there any weird and wonderful, like Japan of, uh, often do stuff like flute players playing something? Or uh, uh, I mean, when that, when that Jack thing, when I did, did that tour. Yeah, I mean, what was that on the TV show that they showed? That, there was a lesbian choir did one of the songs. There was a harmonica band that did another song. Harmonica? Harmonica. <laughs> big <laughs> Loads of these, you can arrange it. Then he, I went to this place where he found this guy who made the old spot on it, and I jammed with him, and he's, he was in the middle of nowhere. He turned up, and this guy was like, oh, he's like oh, he saw me at the door. Oh, did he? They, they knew you were coming, obviously. Yeah, but but. They, they, they like, he freaked out when I got there. It's pretty, you know, I, I think it's a pretty nice thing that, that 
you have you have written music that people want to do stuff like that. Oh, yeah. So, I'm on it. It's really, really it's cool. It's a fucking great honor. I'll tell you what we should do and we never do. Uh, let's play the original Ozzy Osbourne Crazy Train. Okay. All right, we're back. Uh, this is Ozzy Speaks, and uh, I'm chatting with my buddy over there. I'm chatting with my buddy over there, Billy Murray. Um, one person that we can talk about for a whole show if we want, Lemmy Kilmister. You know, I'm, I'm trying to think when I first met Lemmy. I can't That's think. my first question. When did you first meet I, him? I can't remember, but he did the first US tour with him on the Blizzard of Oz. On the Blizzard of Oz. So, so you didn't know him, because like, obviously Lemmy, oh, man, I rock God, right? I, I, I met him when he was with fucking... Did you meet him when he was with Hawkwind? I believe I did. Because in a minute we're going to play Silver Machine. But I, like, you, So you're both from the Midlands, uh, right? No, he's from, he's from Bootley, I think. Where the fuck's Bootlidge? Bootle. He's uh, next, uh, near Liverpool, I think. Oh, oh, okay. Well, okay, to a softy southerner like me, that's all the Midlands. <laughs> Anything north of the Watford but, Gap. But, but, but Le Lemmy got fired from his band, so did I. He got successful with his band, so did I. That's right. Lemmy got fired in Canada, right, for, for having uh, speed on him. <laughs> yeah, but there you see, I said, this is Lemmy, I got... What, what, what are they not doing? He said, oh, yeah, this is always just doing the fucking speed. He said, but they were doing acid. Okay, yeah, they were doing acid, but me doing speed was wrong. No, when I, have you ever read his book? Or, I have, yeah, yeah. Was there somewhere I read about somewhere where he goes, I'll give my son a drug talking to. I said to him, stay away from coke, stay away from smack, just do a bit of speed now and again. <laughs> So it was early when you met him because when was the Blizzard of Oz tour? That was, I mean, uh, that was at nineteen eighty, I think. Right. So you met him in the seventies, right? Obviously. Oh, you know, I can't. I, mean, I remember when you met him in England, right? It, I think I must have or Europe or what. But if anybody was to ask me, who would you say was the epitome, the everything who lived there? It was Lemmy. What? What? The rock and roll lifestyle? He, he he's a part. Absolutely. I should have made a, a video of his apartment because it was just a good... But here's an interesting thing is that, I mean, I, I know we've spoken about it before, but very clever guy. He read books like he would read the fucking yeah. paper. Yeah, which, which gave him the lyrical ability. Obviously, he's written some lyrics for you. and I told the famous story when I went around there to, for him to write... I need some lyrics fast, and it, I can write them, but it would, oh, the album would be just coming out now. And I the <laughs> so he goes, I said, Lem, if I leave you this take, you can knock a few words. I said, and I got this book, I said, it's shown for me, and I, it's better than darts, you know. Somebody bought me a book, and I, I, I said, you can have this book. I said, he said, oh, yeah, I can, I'll see what I can do. I said, I mean, when shall I come back? He says, uh, it's a couple of hours. I said, a couple of hours? You don't need any more time. Just, nah, I'll be all right. So I called it three hours. I thought I'd leave you a bit longer. So I, well, I said, where have you been? I said, oh, I thought I'd leave you a bit longer. He said, I'll oh, come in. He goes, uh, what do you think of them? So I said, all right, if you don't like them, what about them? <laughs> I go, these are good as well. We were right, these three sets of lyrics, different things. <laughs> and he goes, and that book, by the way, was fucking crap. He'd read the book as well. <laughs> I go, what? Ozzy, how long does it take you to read a book? Oh, I'm still reading the fucking big book. <laughs> I was going to say, me reading a book, it just doesn't happen. I can't. You read it in an hour and a half or something. Well, his place was just covered in memorabilia and books. He's and got, he's, he, no, he, he, I mean, him and I had the same interest because we both came from England and Liverpool got bombed, so did in Birmingham. Right. So it's the war, we, we come just after the war, and it was like what we used to play on bomb sites thinking that was a playground, you know. Yeah. I remember, actually, no, my dad wasn't a rock star, but I remember that I loved the stories because he, he played on bomb sites and it was very, I loved those stories because as a kid I wanted to do that. Yeah, but but it's kind of like, uh, people think, it, Lenny wasn't a Nazi, he was just... No, um, it's funny enough, look, uh, a lot of singers, Ian Asprey is the same, they have just a fascination with that era, that's all. I mean, I mean, can you imagine, we've got pandemic now or whatever, can you imagine you're, you're fucking dropping bombs every fucking night? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a time that people so what lived through. Uh, well, I think we should play some Motorhead. 
Ace of Spades. Sure, we will go there. This is Motorhead and Ace of Spades. <laughs> I uh, remember driving up the M1 and I got up at the radio and I go, who oh, the fuck is this great limited motor? <laughs> <laughs> so, did you ever get into debauchery with him? No, but when, when, when I first toured America, we were doing, you know, colleges and right. headlining smaller gigs. And Cass was very, not so much of a wreck. So right. Their rider was incredible. Six bottles of vodka, six bottles of orange juice. Six bottles of Jack Daniels, six bottles of fucking wild turkey. I said, I ain't paying him that fucking much. <laughs> yeah. I remember the first time I was friends with him before I asked Man, him he to... he could put some fucking bourbon down. Yeah. Well, so I was friends with him before he did a, he did a Camp Freddy, Roy Machine sh show, right? Yeah. Oh, I've been, done a couple of them. You've done a couple of them with us too. And I remember... And the yeah, well, the first time I asked Lemmy to do it, he said yes straight away. And then the next day, he texted me and said, I'll do it for a bottle of bourbon and oh, <laughs> and, and some barrel. And what? <laughs> some barrel. Read. Oh. <laughs> and, and we got it for him. He didn't want, he didn't want money. He, didn't want, he just said, I just want a bottle of bourbon and some speed. And there he was. Showed up on time, did the gig. was fucking amazing. <laughs> but he, 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 yeah. I tell you what, I do miss that guy, man. Yeah, I remember. Out of all the people that have, that have gone here, I mean, you know, it's been 40 years since Randy, Randy Road died. Right? 40? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it was not, I One of my enduring memories is the Black Sabbath tour of South America, which was one of his last tours. And it was just Black nice. Sabbath. Uh, uh, Aussie uh, down there when, when Lemmy was with us and we had him on the plane. Remember that? Uh, it was nice. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Because he looked terribly he ill. He did look terribly ill, but it was just nice to have that memory. Well, I felt so. Yeah, he was he was ill, but but it's a nice memory to have. Um, I tell you what, I do want to play, mate. I want to play Hawkwind's <laughs> Silver Machine. Okay. It's a played out song, but it's such a genius song, and we've been talking about. It. Let me. This is Hawkwind and Silver Machine. We're back. Ozzy speaks on Sirius XM. Ozzy's Boneyard. We've been talking about Lemmy. He was definitely a one-off, wasn't he? Oh, there's never been any man before or since. I mean, I guess you could put him in the Keith Richards category. Remember when he was on the uh, young ones in on the English? <laughs> that was an, I, the young ones. Uh, you brought me back. I haven't seen that show in years. But, oh, it's sad when that guy died. What was his name? Uh, uh, was Rick, it Rick Rick, Rick Mail? Yeah, yeah, Rick Mail. I remember uh, seeing Motorhead and Girl School on top of the pops. I remember thinking the girl school. Did they ever do Tabitha Pops with Motorhead? They, oh, a couple of times. There, there was a song called Please Don't Touch, which they did with, I think it was Girl School, and Ace of Spades was on top of the Pops. Oh, is it a bit? Yeah, Ace of Spades was, it was a bigot. Um, and I remember supporting them. I had a band in England, and I remember supporting them. And afterward, it was really hard. And afterwards, I said to Lemmy, so how do you think we did? And he said, well, they didn't throw any sharp objects at you, so they liked you. Because <laughs> it was that hard opening for Motorhead. Okay, mate. Yeah. But, you know, we, we did a few shows with them, which was fun. And uh, They did a whole American tour, and it was, they had this fucking bus. It was like an old soul band bus. It was like inside, it was like, like a 70s disco with <laughs> little lights in the scene of stars and things. <laughs> it's a funny... And it kept fucking breaking down. They kept going on my bus. They'd go, they'd go off like a... They'd do their gig, get on the bus and fucking disappear. Fucking... You'd get three hours later. You'd see them fucking... On the side of the road, <laughs> hitching a ride. The funniest thing was, mate, when I moved here, before I moved here, I would go to a place called the Astoria in Charing Cross Road. Yeah, I know that. And Lemmy would be propping up the bar there. That's how I knew him. And I would just be like, hello, mate, how you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And then uh, I moved here and I walked in to the Rainbow and he's propping up the bar in the rainbow. I'm like, fucking hell, this is uh, this is like nothing's Are changed. You brother, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's someone who looks like you in London. No, what, it, it's lovely memories, and I miss him, and I know you miss him a lot. You were very, very close. I uh, found him on the day, you know. Ah. But they kept handing hand, hand him the phone, and it was like, uh, I, I just wanted to. Yeah. 
we miss him. Oh, we yeah. miss him. But he's he's looking down and we've got his music. Um, looking up. So moving on, um, I don't know where the transition is. I'm just going to talk. Um, have you ever heard of a band called Y&T? Yeah. Do you like yes. them? Yesterday and today, that was... Yeah. Do you like Y&T? I toured with them in Germany. See, this is you've toured with everyone for starters. Yeah, yeah. They had a song called Rescue Me, which I'm going to play later. I think it's amazing, and I don't know what happened to them. Well, when I toured with them, they were all in the bar in Munich or something. Remember, you know, Ozzy Oppie is the promoter of Germany. Yeah, 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 yeah. They were talking about America being, you know, they're all drunk. Ozzy Oppie, give the drummer a real... He's fucking on about war. He says... Oh, really? You know, that's not, that's not a good thing to not do. A place to, not a good not place a good... to... <laughs> no other topic to talk about in Germany. I've had an, I can't talk about it, but I've had an incident with someone in my band and we were sitting in a restaurant in uh, Munich and the wrong thing was said and the, that, he didn't mean it. And the next thing, we're well, standing outside that restaurant with about 10 German guys looking at us. <laughs> I'm in a fucking restaurant one day, my old assistant, and I thought, like, oh, I need some Perrier water, and I, but I don't know how to say it in German. Vast as water. Oh, well. God. <laughs> the guy comes in, he's got a little white gloves in his uh, shoulder thing. And he clicks his heels and he, he, I'm like, fucking, here we go. <laughs> How do I say this? I said, meet, can I have Vasa meet bubbles? He goes, <laughs> meet bubbles? <laughs> bubbles? <laughs> oh, Vasa is bubbles. So I go, meet fees. Meet fees. <laughs> so I go, with gas. He goes, gas? Oh. Gas? What you say, gas? <laughs> <laughs> meet, meet gas. <laughs> gas, you went. Oh, my God. Yeah, it, it can go wrong very quickly in Germany. It definitely has for me. But, but, but they, they must get used to that now. <laughs> yeah, but there's, you know, there's the old guard over there. Um, well, I'll tell you what. We are, I believe, at the end of this show. And if you don't mind, I'd love to go out with some wine tea. Rescue me. Please do. We'll be back next month. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Stay tuned, stay safe, and we'll be back. Bye.